Welcome filmmakers and guests joining us today in the Honda Pacific Visions Theater and virtually the to the Aquarium of the Pacific's first annual High Tide Festival Screening and Award Ceremony. I'm Luke Richmond and I'll be hosting with my colleague Emily Yam for tonight's event. Hi everyone. It's so wonderful to see people here in our theater space. The High Tide Film Festival was created to provide opportunities for Southern California high school students to explore ocean science and conservation through creative storytelling. Students chose from one of three ocean science topics and were provided resources for each. Resources like workshops on creative storytelling and tips for filmmaking. This way, any interested student could participate, regardless if they didn't know about the topic or had any prior filmmaking experience. And the aquarium was excited to receive 80 film submissions from 120 students throughout 20 different cities in Southern California. A team of over 70 volunteer judges, which included aquarium staff and distinguished community members, judged films on creativity and the ability to tell a compelling story. Tonight, we're proud to showcase these films, the finalist films, which exemplify the many intersections between art and science. And before we start screening our films and introducing you to our incredible student talent tonight, I would like to introduce up to the stage the High Tide Student Film Festival sponsors, Dr. Allen and Charlotte Ginsburg, who've made all of this possible. Good evening, I'm Allen Ginsberg, and Lady Charlotte is my wife. We are honored and, and uh, dedicated to this student film festival. And I want to emphasize student, because it's extremely important to realize that unless we pass this legacy on to other people and so forth, we really haven't done our job. Uh, graphic arts are really the future of communication. Uh, they impact the world, and uh, the future is in this room. Uh, we've had the honor and the privilege of being involved with the construction of this great room, and uh, we hope the content uh, is definitely related to the future. My wife has been involved at the board uh, of the aquarium for a number of years, and uh, uh, involved also with Pacific Visions that essentially built this great room. Uh, I want to introduce, introduce my wife, Charlotte, who has a few remarks to make. Oh. Charlotte? Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening, filmmakers and storytellers. Welcome to everyone here in this beautiful new theater. And we're very excited to be here for our first annual High Tide Film Festival. Going forward, we hope to have it here every year in this beautiful new Pacific Visions Theater. We also want to give a special shout out to all our family and friends watching online. We envision this film festival as a way to bring things together, things that we feel and we are very passionate about science, art, and education. The future is filled with opportunities for students like you. We, you can make such a beautiful impact on our world through your curiosity, your creativity, your courage to learn, and most of all, your courage to take chances. We really appreciate you being here and joining us in this film festival. You've made beautiful and impactful films with your words and your fresh voices. Many of you had to learn about fisheries and global warming to tell your stories. And your passion and your talent shines through. And we are very proud of all of you. It's very exciting for us. So. Uh, we, as a board of director of the Aquarium of the Pacific, I can tell you that we put a lot of thought and energy into this beautiful new theater. 
It was designed as a platform to share very important stories about science, conservation, and things that impact our ocean. It's a platform where we can change humanity. And so for all you students, thank you again. And I'd like to give special thanks to Peter Kariva, our president and CEO, and also co-directors Adina Metz and Alicia Archer, who worked so hard to create this vision. I'd also like to thank Derek Basili and our AV team that does all these wonderful videos, and they're up there. Hi, Derek. <laughs> Hi. They're up there filming this beautiful event. Uh, I'd also like to think, thank Ryan Ashton, VP of Development, for all his help. Thank you, Ryan. And also, I'd like to thank all the staff judges. There were 60 of them, volunteer staff judges. And also, there were 12 official judges. So thank you for being here tonight. So now I'd like you all to sit back and enjoy the films. Congratulations to all of you. And we appreciate you watching online. You're, our, you're the bright voices of our future. So please give an applause to all our film makers here tonight. The finalist films we'll be screening first belong to the Ocean and Me category, which explores the interconnected relationship people have with the ocean. Students who chose this ocean science topic, excuse me, students who chose this ocean science topic were asked to tell how they're personally connected to the ocean and how they can inspire others to be ocean stewards. For each category, we'll first show all three films at once and then announce the winners. Before we begin, Please remember to silence or put on airplane mode or do not disturb all cell phones and electronic devices and enjoy. The ocean is a great friend in which we all share. It provides us with so much and it is what connects us all. No matter where you live in the world, the ocean is a big part of your everyday life. It defines our planet, covering 70% of it. It helps us survive and is home to over half of all life on the planet. The ocean grants you not only with its beauty and its calming sound of waves, but with the air you breathe in. It produces over half of the world's oxygen and absorbs 50 times more carbon dioxide than our own atmosphere. The ocean helps us stabilize our weather. It transports heat from the equator to the poles, which helps in climate regulation. Surfing, swimming, those family cruise trips you take are all delightful things and memories you share with the ocean. The ocean provides you and I with the food we eat, not only in seafood, but in the many ingredients found in foods you might have not known came from the ocean. But even with all our friend the ocean gives us, we take it for granted. We don't take care of it like it takes care of us. Our actions have caused the lives of many aquatic animals and have impacted every ocean habitat. We don't take a moment and see what the ocean really does for us and how much we damage it every day. We are causing the sea to warm up and rise slowly, making it more acidic. It's sad to see the damage we are doing to our own ocean that provides us with so much. 
we all need a healthy ocean in order to survive. Change our ways, repay our friend for all the years we have damaged it. We can reduce pollution and ocean acidification and repopulate the sea once more. It is not too late to change our relationship with the ocean and help it thrive like it is supposed to. This is in our hands. The ocean needs our help. The decision lies in you. Hi, I'm Kalani Ono. I haven't always loved the ocean. As a little kid, my mom would tell stories about how I would absolutely hate everything to do with the beach, from the sand to the waves. It was only after I'd been to the aquarium that I noticed I loved the ocean's creatures. Quite some time after that, I really got into marine biology. The ocean inspires me and fueled my choice to go to Liquid Hot, which has an ocean-based pathway. I found something I love while being mesmerized by the ocean and its creatures, scuba diving. Some of the wonderful creatures I found underwater are the sea bass, the Garibaldi, which is also the state fish, the two spot octopus, the spiny lobster, the moray eel. The Horn Shark, all in all, scuba diving has opened my eyes. Every time I go down, the world above seems so far away. The wildlife I've found I never really knew about, but I learned so much about them and the way they coexist. Finally, I've earned a respect for the ocean that I never had before. I've used my new skill of scuba diving to clean up the oceans, and while still scientifically logging it, I have fun. Life is a fast-paced, chaotic mess, but we all need a special place to unwind and rest. I seek balance. She rewards me with life. As internally society crumbles from disagreement and strife. I wish everyone would embrace her serenity. But sad to say, we won't have her indefinitely.
my childhood was enriched with coastal adventures and seaside magic. But now all she garners is debris and plastic. She warms my heart with frigid bleak waves when a plague has turned her shores to graves. A pest has vandalized her saline waters of inherent bloom as the mirrored reflection is emitted with harsh and dangerous fumes. Is this really what we want for our offspring and future generations? To rob them of such earthbound beauty and ethereal sensations? Set aside all ignorance and think for a second. What are some of the oceans valuable life lessons? She instructs tranquility, freedom, and tenacity. A body which prides itself, but still believes in humanity. Within time, she will have less fish than waste. As we realize, when you spit to the sky, it falls on your face. Excellent films. Oh, you still have some good. <laughs> this is what we've all been waiting for. All right, in the category of Ocean to Me, the Bronze Award goes to Kalani Ono of Lakewood High School for the film Scuba. Congratulations, Kalani. I have one question for you here. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. What was your favorite part of making your film? Um, I think it was when me and my father got to experience all the underwater creatures and, what, and try to figure out what they were. I think you did a wonderful job of documenting all that in your film. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I welcome you to take a Thank photo you. right here. Okay. In the category for Ocean and Me, the Silver Award will go to Omar De Leon of Bonita High School in Laverne for Signora Oceano. Welcome, Omar. We'd love to know, uh, if you could take a moment, what creative aspects of your film are you most proud of? Oh, man. Um, probably the little poem that I included with, with, um, alongside my film. Um, I've loved writing ever since I was a little kid. I was always infatuated with creative writing and just really getting involved and just you know, seeing what my words can, can do and you know, what impact that can have on other people. And I just you know, decided to include that with, with the long one side of my film, and yeah, I'm happy you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I think it was really striking. Thank you for sharing that with us. And then in the category of Ocean and Me, the Gold Award goes to Caitlin Gonzalez of Whitney High School in Cerritos for our friend, The Ocean.
Congratulations, Caitlin. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell us what advice would you give to another student interested in storytelling through film? I think the biggest advice I could give to someone, you know, starting off in film is really finding your style and knowing how you want to tell your story. I feel like it's so important to use your passion to create something so great and inspire others through filmmaking. I also think that, um, you know, never be discouraged by anyone. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If you're passionate about filmmaking, continue on because there's so many directors you see now getting Oscars and they weren't where they were today if they didn't keep on going and getting the experiences they did get. Um, so I say keep moving forward and also never get discouraged by um, not having the right equipment because just with the phone you could tell your story however you want. So I would just say keep on going and thank you so much. I would also like to thank the Aquarium for allowing us students to you know, have an outlet to create, especially during this time of COVID. I think um, I was really thankful that I got to exp like experience this and also create something so impactful that tells such a powerful message. And I'm just so thankful to be here with such creative um, student filmmakers that did such an amazing job. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone watching at home that supports me and my family in the audience that supports me through everything I do. I love you guys so much. And thank you so, so much again. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. Absolutely, it's our honor. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more about all the creativity that we're seeing tonight that we've seen in all this time leading up until today. Wonderful. Our next ocean science category is thriving in a changing climate. Student filmmakers were challenged to think about what they love about their community how it's impacted by climate change, and how their community can act together to be more climate so resilient. According to National Geographic, we have cataloged around 226,000 individual species residing in our oceans. Everything from whales to eels to kelp to tiny shrimp. 226,000 different species may sound like a lot, but it is simply impossible to know how many species live in the depths. Scientists estimate that there are anywhere from a hundred thousand to several million new species to be discovered in the ocean, meaning 90% of ocean species could still be undiscovered. This seems unsurprising when you consider 80% of the oceans in the world remain unmapped. So what's the point of this? The ocean is an incredible place, but we've barely scratched the surface of learning about the marine life on our very own planet. The scientific potential of what we can learn is unfathomable. Unfortunately, the ocean is not in a very good position to continue to be studied. Marine animals and plants are struggling against human-caused problems, including pollution and increasing temperatures. But there is hope. The oceans are absolutely essential to life on Earth as we know it today. They cover about 70% of the surface of our planet. In the poles, ice caps hold even more water at frozen, frigid temperatures. Human activity since the Industrial Revolution has melted much of this ice. The Environmental Protection Agency says that when averaged over all of the world's oceans, sea levels have risen roughly six-tenths of an inch every ten years since 1880. In recent times, it has increased to an inch per decade. Furthermore, warmer waters increase chances of stronger tropical storms, which damage seaside communities and economies. 
the oceans are a tremendous help in regulating carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Seagrass, algae, kelp, and many more types of seed-dwelling plant life uses photosynthesis, just like plants above the surface. NASA reports that oceans absorb about a quarter of all of the CO2 that we pump out. So, what can you do? On an individual level, pick up your trash, don't dump into oceans, and reduce your carbon footprint. There's no more time to hope others will save our oceans. It's up to us now. Organize your community, promote green energy, but always remember, right now the oceans may be relying on us, but in the long run, we rely on the oceans. Long Beach is a truly special city that is enjoyed by all. Its community has much to offer, including many diverse cultures and foods, affordable transportation, museums, beaches, parks, golf courses, bike paths, youth programs, and attractions like the Aquarium of the Pacific and the Queen Mary. The list goes on. Unfortunately, the devastating effects of climate change can threaten not only these amenities, but also basic needs like food, water, and shelter. Climate change such as warmer temperatures will cause glaciers and snowpacks to melt, resulting in rising sea levels, eroding coastal areas, and warmer ocean waters. For example, as the polar ice caps melt, Arctic animals will lose their habitat, while warmer oceans will become more acidic, dissolving the shells of sea creatures. Warmer temperatures will also result in more evaporation, leading to increasingly more violent storms and flooding, while in drier and hotter areas, drought, fires, and air pollution will increase. More importantly, these phenomena will result in unreliable water supplies for agriculture, threatening the food supply for much of the world. Warmer temperatures are caused by an increase in greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane. There are several ways, however, to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. For example, using alternate energy sources such as wind and solar, creating safer, lighter, longer-lasting batteries, using energy-efficient lighting, using clean air transportation like bicycles and electric vehicles, and recycling. Since completely preventing climate change is nearly impossible, communities must also be resilient against it. Regular citizens can be resilient by eliminating food waste, planting drought-tolerant landscaping, growing trees to provide shade, expanding zoos and aquariums to save animals on the verge of extinction, and conserving water. Since the existing infrastructure of cities may not be adequate to handle more frequent extreme weather, experts should also review the community's infrastructure in an effort to make it more flood resistant. And more importantly, citizens must make sure to vote such measures into law. There is no doubt that climate change is a real threat. To preserve the food supply and infrastructure that makes today's life in Long Beach convenient, entertaining, healthy, and enjoyable, the community must come together to address climate change going forward. Obviously, preventing climate change altogether would be ideal, but since 100% prevention is not realistic, resilience will be the key to sustaining our communities once climate change becomes increasingly more intense and widespread. By conserving water and energy, using cleaner sources of energy and transportation, and enhancing infrastructure, every citizen can help mitigate the impact of climate change. Not long ago, when I was young, you were the sun. You cast my shadow big and strong. I swam next to you and dreamed of the deep, or I stood on your shoulders and reached for the stars. This leg up you gave me, I thought it was just and fair. I trusted you, I thought you cared. What happens to me after you're gone? Now your curtains are drawn closed you left me to fend off all the problems to mend the world you destroyed then with the ocean rise came all the lies now i know the falsehoods you spread and all i feel is overwhelming dread
For so many years I was misled. I'm growing up fast, so I wanted to make a last wish. Last night I looked up to find a star, but all I saw was smoke and tar. You've betrayed me beyond quantifiable measure, extorted the whole planet for your own dang pleasure. I feel that my future is under your control. How can I do what I want? How can I do what I dream when we face such huge problems as the things I have seen? You stand by while people drown and die. Toxic gases blow, chemicals flow into the sea, acid in the rain and snow. Not enough oxygen in the water, fish can't breathe, corals bleached, they had to leave. More plastic than fish now in the sea, killing the oceans, I beg you don't let this be. If the future is ruined, I must fix the planet so that when my girl grows up, there will be no big lie and she will never lose sight of the stars in the sky. Three excellent movies. So, let us see here. The winners for our category, Thriving in a Changing Climate, are three. And the first, in the bronze, is Lana Missios from Long Beach Polytechnic High School for her film, The Fight Against Climate Change. So, Lana, what was your favorite part of making your film? Well, one, sorry. Um, I enjoyed the entire process of creating the film. First, I had fun going around the city, taking pictures. Creating the narrative was challenging, but where I learned the most about climate change. Finally, synchronizing the character voiceover, I mean, sorry, narrative voiceover with the video was overall my favorite part because it was a fun puzzle to solve, especially trying to get it under the three minute time limit. It was rewarding to see all of the hard work put into the film come together to create a short educational film. Thank you very much to the Aquarium of the Pacific for giving us this opportunity as student filmmakers. It was awesome and um, it was both educational and fun. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and our next award, the Silver Award, in the Thriving in a Changing Climate category goes to Liam Wright from San Marino High School for Ocean Life, Thriving in a Changing Climate. <laughs> so I have a question for you. What's something that you learned while making your film? Oh, oh thank you. Um, I learned a lot when making my film. There's a lot of um, startling statistics that you might say that I discovered, um, I researched from NASA, the EPA, and uh, National Geographic, and I learned that you know 80% of the ocean we haven't even mapped, and only one in 10 ocean species have even been discovered. So there's a lot of interesting facts about the ocean, which I learned, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to the aquarium <laughs> and everybody. Thank you, Liam. That's very well researched. And then finally, and then finally, for the gold award for thriving in a changing climate, we have Dreaming of the Deep by Darwin Melchior from Sage Oak High School in Redlands. Bravo. Aha. Let's try and vacate for you. So, what creative aspect of your film are you most proud of? First, 
I'd like to thank uh, my parents for giving me enough time and um, supporting me through making this film. I'd like to thank my uh, high school, Say Joke Charter School, and my um, professors at Valley Community College where I'm lucky enough to be enrolled as a high school student. And of course, the aquarium and the donors who made this amazing opportunity possible. Um, my favorite creative aspect? Yeah, what was your, what um, were you most proud of? Was probably just being able to express all of the feelings I have about the changing climate and just express it in a way that other people will be able to see. Um, I know that as a kid, it often feels like you can't, like your voice isn't being heard about these really, really important issues. And it meant a lot to me to be able to express that both through my animation and through my poetry. Um, yeah. Thank you again to the um, Aquarium of the Pacific and the donors, including the Ginsburg Ginsburgs, for this amazing opportunity. It means a lot to me to have this. Well, thank you for your film. <laughs> All right. So, our last category will explore how responsibly sourced seafood can play an important role in providing access to healthy and nutritious foods that have minimal impacts to the environment and support in communities and economies. Please enjoy the following two films for this category. We'll see you soon. Did you know that the ocean consists of over 3 trillion fish? Although this may be a huge number, scientists believe the world's fish population has declined by 4.1% since 1930. Scientists also suspect fishless oceans by 2048 due to human overfishing. Luckily, there is a way to prevent this. Here's a list of 5 fish whose population is the least of your concerns. Coming up first is the fish you may know as squid. It contains 104 calories, 2 grams of fat, 3 grams of carbs, and 18 grams of protein. Next up on the list is Wahoo. This fish contains 114 calories, 2.2 grams of fat, 0 grams of carbs, and 22 grams of protein. Coming up third is the first fatty fish on the list known as mackerel. Mackerel holds 189 calories, 11.9 grams of fat, 0 grams of carbs, and 19 grams of protein. Up next is the second best fatty fish on the list called Crevalli Jack. This fish has 160 calories, 5 grams of fat, 3 grams of carbs, and 24 grams of protein. The last fish on the list is one you may know very well as tuna. Tuna holds 191 calories, 1.4 grams of fat, 0 carbs, and 42 grams of protein, making it the biggest fatty fish on the list. So please consider searching for these fish the next time you go fishing. If you'd like to learn more for yourself, try looking into some of these sites. Thank you for watching and have a nice visit. Hi, I'm Davey. I'm 15, a freshman in high school, and I live right here in the Mojave Desert. But where I really want to live is right here on the rocky coast of Southern California. So I've recently become excited about kelp farming. It's a way for me to make a living that provides not only for me, but for my community. And it's a benefit to the entire world as well. Let me explain. We are in the midst of experiencing a massive climate crisis. This is largely due to increased levels of CO2 from the burning of fossil fuels. The more CO2, the warmer the planet, and the greater the acidity in the ocean, which causes our marine ecosystems to collapse. Now here's the cool part. Kelp uses CO2 to make more kelp. It thereby acts as a filtration system that takes bad things out of the air and turns them into good things on the shoreline. Kelp is great for other reasons too. You don't need fresh water, fertilizer, or any sort of pesticides to grow kelp. How awesome is that? Also, kelp is packed full of protein as well as other incredibly healthy vitamins and nutrients. It also provides an amazing ecosystem for shellfish to live and thrive of which I can harvest, eat, and sell. It's been estimated that if we had enough kelp farms on Earth equivalent to half the area of California, we could feed the world. Let that sink in for a second. 
Another thing to consider is that kelp farming would create opportunities for thousands of jobs for people who love the ocean just like me. Now I could go on and on about these things, but I only have three minutes, so let me explain the issue. The environmental laws and regulations in California have essentially rendered getting into kelp farming impossible. In order to begin, you need to have an environmental study done, as well as acquire a lease for your water farm. This so-called water bottom lease costs about $500 and takes anywhere between 18 months to two years to obtain. Now, you might be thinking, two years? That's kind of steep. But I assure you, that's nothing compared to the environmental study. That guy takes five years to complete, and get this, costs anywhere between $25 to $500,000. That's outrageous! A normal guy like me can't afford that. All right, listen, I'm almost out of time, so let me leave you with this. When I graduate from high school in three years, I want to be able to enter this industry and spend my life farming kelp, not scrambling to get permission to use a couple acres of water. I truly believe more than anything that if we all work together, we can really make a difference here. We can talk to lawmakers, raise awareness, and educate our population about this up and coming industry so that we can really make our world an even better place for you, me, and many generations to come. I just want to say thank you to the Aquarium of the Pacific for this amazing opportunity. For the category of Responsible Seafood, the Silver Award goes to Adrian Thompson from Long Beach Polytechnic High School for their film Conservative Seafood. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank you. Adrian. <laughs> Thank um, you. I, I wanted to know, what was your favorite part of making your film? My favorite part was explaining the nutrients within each fish and how the fatty foods within them and the processes of how the least population concern they consist of. Yeah, I think that was really informative. We really appreciate your art. Thank you. Thank you. And the gold award in the category of responsible seafood goes to Davy Schneider from Toronto High School in Wrightwood for his film Kelp California. So, uh, what advice would you give to another student interested in storytelling through film? Well, I've not made a whole ton of films, so my advice here is going to be, you know, a bit iffy. But I'd say it's always good to have a good idea of what you're doing when you're going in. You know, don't completely freestyle things. Have a, yeah, just have a good idea of what the film is going to look like. But don't direct yourself with an iron fist. Always leave some room for improvisation and just coming up with new ideas on the spot so that when you're out there and filming things, you can really let your heart and soul flow out through your work. I think that was definitely true for your work. Thank you very much. Well, Aquarium staff members volunteered um, at, to serve as judges for this film festival, and they had a really wonderful experience watching all of your films, all of this creativity, all of your art. So we developed a new award category to recognize a few more films as a part of our staff picks category, and we're going to close our evening sharing these two films now. The ocean and me go way back. She's been there for me for as long as I can remember. She's my best friend. She never flakes on plane. I can always hang out at her place. 
and there's no emotions involved to make things complicated. I think she's really pretty. But don't tell her that. She's vast, she's unpredictable, yet consistent, and chaotic, yet calm. She's my great escape. In an ever-changing world, she's been my rock, and I don't want her to change. I care about her. These days, my friends and I share a love for her. It's safe to say we're addicted. Her awesome ways are just the adrenaline rush we were looking for. And it's helped bring me closer to them and share moments I only dreamt of when I was younger. So that's why I love her. Now it's your turn. Go show her some love swap. All of the stories have been told. Secret places hidden well. I've gone now as far as I can tell. The ocean, to me, is exactly what it is for most of you watching right now. It's a place to relax, to enjoy, to cherish, to love, to laugh. But it also gives us so much more than that. The ocean cools our coast here in the west while warming the east. The ocean provides tons of delicious delicacies and products for us to use and to enjoy. It's a home to fish, coral, plants, more fish, and even more fish. It's a place for us to fish, surf, swim, and to dip our toes in. Not only that, but the ocean also provides over 50% of the air we breathe through plant life. Plus, over 12% of the world's food supply depends on fisheries. The ocean provides so much more to us than just leisure. That's why we have to protect it. That's why we have to do our part in keeping our ocean clean and protecting our climate. Both small acts and big ones will help protect our ocean. Making sure you conserve water and being mindful of your usage is a big one. Make sure you turn off the water when you're not using it and don't take too long showers. Reduce your waste, use reusable bags when you should go to shop and avoid disposable plastic. But when you do use disposable plastic, make sure you recycle it. You could also do what my personal favorite thing is to do, which is going to a beach cleanup with my friends. No matter what you do, whether you're doing something small like using reusable bags or doing something big like a beach cleanup every weekend. It is up to us to take care of our ocean and planet as if it's our home. Because at the end of the day, what the ocean means to me is exactly that. A home. A home that we all have to do our part in taking care of. So, Alan, if you want to step up to the mic first, what was your favorite part of this process? I think my favorite part of doing this project is taking my subject, which was Ocean and Me, which is such a vague and uh, not a very hard to find topic, and turning it into something meaningful, like this film, giving it meaning. 
giving my own personal values into it and turning it into something that really meant something. Yeah, very good work. Well, thank you. And Jack, how about you? What did you uh, find most rewarding about this? What did you like the most about it? Um, it was really cool to share my own story about the ocean. I think that uh, something that a lot of people that don't have immediate access to the ocean lack in, uh, like something they can't understand and it's hard to appreciate the ocean if you're not connected to it. Like uh, somebody who hasn't had first hand access to the ocean probably doesn't care about ocean cons conservation as much as I do. Um, so I think that making the ocean an exciting place for a lot of people is really exciting because it brings more attention to something that needs more attention. Yeah. Something we do here at the Aquarium, so I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, bravo, really good work. Thank you. And thank you to both of our staff picks. So uh, we want to thank everyone for coming tonight. It's been an amazing opportunity for the Aquarium of the Pacific to highlight such a talented group of student filmmakers and artists tonight. Uh, but before you go, I'd love to introduce and make welcome Dr. Peter Kariva, the president and CEO of the Aquarium of the Pacific, to say a few closing words. I thought, I thought we were going to have some honorable mentions behind us, but I guess not. Uh, first, I'm Oh, okay, great. Um, you know, all, many of us in this room were evaluating these films, and we had favorites that didn't make it to win, um, and that was painful. <laughs> and so we invented yet another category, the honorable mention, and uh, I know these students aren't here. I hope they're, they're watching it on live stream because you're going to get a special package from us it's going to be worth opening in through the mail and it's not an amazon package it's mail you can ask your parents what that is um but it, it was so much fun to see all the different films that connected to each of us in different ways it and it's just it's it's magical it really is and i want to you know say something to alan and and charlotte um you know i, do, I don't know them that well I had a couple lunches with them, but this is really also for the student audiences. They're so much fun to be with. You know, you go out to lunch with them, and they tell you about their, they've been married for 41 years. Uh, Charlotte was a professional dancer. Um, so much panache and style. Alan started out at an, as an ophthalmologist and an entrepreneur, and he's very engaged in science. I actually now think, Alan, I think of you as a futurist. You're a futurist. And, um, and what they do, what, what, what is here in this festival is it's science, it's art and storytelling, it's kids, and it's fun. And you put those things together and you can't help but be optimistic. You just can't help but, you know, science isn't dour. Our problems are complicated. Sometimes they seem insurmountable, but that combination is, is so, so, so powerful. And this theater and these types of events, um, I hope this is, this is the first, you know, I guess this isn't an event, I kept in the sense of um, COVID regulations. This is a film screening, <laughs> um, but um, this is the first thing like this in 16 months, and it feels good. And I hope it's the first of 100. Just think we could do, a, I mean, we really can. We could, we could be doing 100 of these a year. There's so much potential, and there's just so much local talent. I also want to take time to really give an extra shout out to Alicia and Adina. Please stand up. Um, I know you guys are so modest. And I know, you're, you know, Charlotte taught you, but I gotta say, um, you know, they had no idea what they were getting into. And I, you know, I, and, um, I didn't know what they were getting into either, but it was so much work. Alicia I, you know, probably thought it was gonna be a few days on top of her full-time education job. And she was in here on weekends and doing so much. And Adina, 
I show up at my office this morning at 8.30, and sheepishly, she's packing up to go home. Literally, she's packing up to go home. It was that much work. So thank you, guys. And then she gave me, she wrote a, she wrote a speech for me, and I lost it. But she, um, <laughs> she, um, but she, uh, she had a list of, of all these other thank yous, and I sort of want to combine them in one way. Instead of just calling out you know, sort of endless n names, is sort of the, the community you have here. We already heard about the staff, but what you want to see is what makes the reason we could do a hundred of these is because we don't just, it's not just about the infrastructure, it's about we have the AV team, we have the education team, we have people who help out who can really, you know, make this the hottest ticket in Southern California. And that's what I think it could be. And, and we also want to thank the, the, the judges, and the judges were really hand-picked to engage the community. And they didn't have to say yes. You could ask to do this stuff, uh, city council members, Dr. Joe Baker, superintendent of Long Beach, well, you could ask to do this stuff all the time. You didn't have to say yes. They did. They did, and that speaks to commitment. So um, for all of the judges, thank you, and I hope we will be working with you on not just this, but a lot of other things in the future. Um, Cindy and Mary, thank you if you're here. And of course, the, the board, there's a, some board members here, and you have to imagine that our board, being a board member, um, you know, you, you, you gain success, you might join a board, and it's very, it's usually very rewarding. Because you get to meet with your colleagues, it's social, you have shared values, and you get to work on things. Being a board member and sticking with it during this last year could not have been fun. It could have been nothing but, you know, just worry. Worry about the institution they cared about. Um, we're coming out of it now, and so I, I um, you know, before we leave here and um, we exit down uh, on the floor to go out to the, the um, pre-show gallery where I, you could take pictures with your parents and take pictures of each other to sort of celebrate it. I'm going to see if I can get a picture with the Charlotte if Alan will allow it. Um, but I think this is, it's going to open up more and um, I can't help but say that uh, I can't imagine a brighter future and because I'm such a ham, I'm going to put on my shades for the brighter future. Thank you for everybody for showing up. And um, let's go out and celebrate the students. Celebrate the students and just think of how much more we could do with this facility. Thank you. If you would like, when you get outside here into the art gallery, we'd love to have you.